Okay, let me show you the definition of peak. Haya Toys is a company that I'm not too familiar with. From what I've gathered, they do a lot of movie-related figures that tend to be small in scale, but very big in detail. That's from their exquisite mini line. This is the exquisite basic line, which are figures that are either 1 12th scale or non-scale, but usually fall on the 6-inch range. The only other franchise other than Godzilla in this line is Naruto of all things. And you know me and Naruto, I just don't care about it. However, what got them under my radar was the announcement of their monster. Monsterverse Godzilla figure, Darity Goji to be specific. It looked amazing at the time, but it had some noteworthy flaws which kept me away from buying it. But later on, they released a new figure that fixed these issues, and I was hyped. And today, we'll be taking a look at just that. But before we go any further, I'd like to mention that I'll be going over their 2019 version of Godzilla, and not any of the repaints. I also won't be going over the 2021 version of Godzilla, both the first and the second version. Yes, this figure and the second 2021 figure look very similar but they're both separate releases. It's very confusing, I know. So let's take a look at it. The paying and sculpting for this figure is... Perfection. We have a lot to cover. The majority of the color used for this figure is a stone gray with some lighter gray and beige in between the scales. It isn't too dark or too light. And that's about it. Godzilla isn't the most colorful titan out there, unless he starts glowing like a fed. Despite this, that's what I really like about it. It might be simple, but the way it's applied is what makes a difference. This made me look back at the other articulated figures of this Godzilla incarnation for comparison, most notably the NECA and the SH Monster Arts figures. In a way, this is like an upgraded NECA figure. Both figures are painted in a nice shade of gray although the NECA figure seems to be a bit lighter. The Hayatoys figure is more balanced. Along with that, both have paint in between the scales that make them pop out. You can point where each of them are. Ironically, this is something that the SH Monster Arts figure, a line that's dedicated to making highly detailed kaiju figures, lacks. The paint on the SH figure is very dark, and some details aren't as visible. It lacks those previously mentioned painted scale highlights. The scales are lost in a sea of black, which isn't really a color I associate with this version of Godzilla. While a majority of Godzilla incur are black. This one specifically is presented as gray, so this doesn't really fit to me. Okay, we'll admit, NECA SOS Goji isn't exactly the best comparison, since they gave him a much brighter paint job. However, the SH Monster Arts Kiru Goji is a bit better, since it's much darker. There's a reason why I like this version of Godzilla from Playmates more than the other one. That one's paint job is very dark in my opinion, and just doesn't fit to me. You think that one gets the pass? And while there is some slight paint apps at the belly, you probably wouldn't have caught the at first glance. However, the one thing both the Hayatoys and the SH figures have over the NECA figure are the eyes. The NECA figure tried, let's just say that. But the other two nailed it. Despite this, the Hayatoys figure still beats out the SH figure, and that's due to it being more movie accurate. The SH figure's eyes look more like a bird of praise than it does in the movie. Nevertheless, I'm still impressed that they were able to paint them at this scale. If you're wondering why I have the head angled in a certain way, that's because the Monsterverse design has an eyebrow ridge that creates a shadow over the eyes, which makes it a bit difficult to see. Another thing that the Hayatoys figure does well is the inside of the mouth. The NECA figure again tried. There's no sculpting for the inside of it, and the paint bleeds over the weirdly sculpted teeth, giving him an unintentional gum line. The SH figure does have some sculpting inside of it, but the paint is as dark as the rest of the figure, and doesn't look as fleshy as the other two. Plus, due to how the teeth are sculpted, the paint for them looks a bit messy. However, the Hayatoys figure's mouth looks very organic and realistic. Even the tongue sculpting looks great. The one, and only problem with this thing is that the paint for it bleeds just behind the lower jaw in my copy, but that is the only complaint I have with this thing's paint. Now the one important thing that the Hayatoys figure does the absolute best at is its overall sculpt. It really captures the bulkiness of the Monsterverse Godzilla, with his wide neck, broad shoulders, thick thighs, and large muscular tail. On the other hand, the proportions of the SH figure never really sat well with me. It looks more like a combination of the actual Monsterverse design and the Final Wars design, long before the Fire Wars figure got released. For example, the neck and the chest all look very thin compared to the Hayatoys and even the NECA figure. His body looks more skinnier than the others. To add on to this, the sculpting for the Hayatoys figure is much more precise. For example, the gills on his neck are more visible than the other two. The gills on the NECA figure are there, but they're not well detailed, whereas the gills on the SH Monster Arts figure are barely visible or non-existent, and I don't know why that is. It's also worth noting that the figure doesn't feel rough or jagged, 
jagged. In fact, it feels very satisfying to hold and has some heft to it. So overall, the figure is marvelous. And when I say marvelous, I really do mean it provokes marvel. It's honestly very satisfying to look at. Now, as I'd mentioned before, this figure feels like an upgraded NECA figure. So if you're familiar with how the NECA figure articulates, you'd be surprised with how similar these two are. But it's far less limited. The mouth can open, and the tongue is on a hinge. The head can look side to side, can look up, but not so much down. Now, this neck sculpt is a massive upgrade from the original release. The original release looked a lot less seamless when posed due to how the neck parts were sculpted, but with this newer sculpt, it looks a lot more natural. Despite this, the SH Monster Arts figure still has the advantage of range, with it being able to look upwards. Now, the Atomic Breath version of this figure has an alternate neck piece that allows it to look straight up like it did in the movie, which is a bit of a downside, but it's not that bad. It's something that I can live without. At least it isn't like the NECA figure's neck articulation, which is non-existent. Well, it can twist, but it's so limited that I don't even know if it counts. The shoulders can rotate and can move in and out. The elbows can bend, and it, along with the hands, can swivel. The hands also have some slight in and out movement too, although I wish they came with a little more range. The chest can swivel and can lean forwards. Just be careful with the dorsal spines when twisting it around. The thighs can rotate and spread. This is much better compared to the SH Monster Arts figure, which creates gaps on the body when posing it, which are hard to ignore. The knees can double bend, and the ankles can swivel with a slight bend. And finally, the tail has a great range of movement. In fact, it's very similar to the NECA figure as well. However, when compared to the SH figure, yeah, can you see why I like this thing more now? The posability of this figure is downright fantastic. Sure, it doesn't have as much range as the SH Monster Arts figure, but at least it doesn't suffer from sculpt gaps and weak joint connection. Of course, I could ask for more articulation, but then I'd be asking for too much. I mean, I would've liked it if they gave him more range at the shoulders, but other than that, it's fine. So overall, the articulation is perfect the way it is. Posing it is as satisfying as the way it looks. For accessories, you don't get any. I'm actually okay with this, and I'll get into why later. Finally, let's scale him out. He's about 7 inches tall and 12 inches long. Here he is next to the Figma Sakya Izuyoi, the NECA SOS Goji, the NECA 2019 Godzilla, the SH Monster Arts 2019 Godzilla, and the Amber Collection Velociraptor. So, should you get this guy? Okay, here's the thing. I've been lying to you by saying this isn't the best monster First Godzilla figure out there. It's something the SH Monster Arts figure should have been. However, the only company that can beat out this figure as of me making this video is Haya Toys themselves. What I'm saying is, is while this figure is better compared to others so far, Haya Toys might one-up themselves again, like what they did with their Godzilla 2021 figure. I'm not sure why they do that, since this thing barely has any issues, and there are not a lot of differences between the two, but the possibility is still out there. I could have said that this figure is the most movie accurate, but who knows if Haya Toys decides to do better than before. What I will say is what makes these figures so worth it is the price. Haya Toys Godzilla figures go for roughly $50, which in my opinion is absolutely worth that price. Compare this to NECA figures, which used to be $20, have now skyrocketed to being as much as a Haya Toys figure due to them not being made anymore. And when compared to an SH Monster Arts figure, the differences are night and day. You could get an SH Monster Arts figure that goes upwards to around $70 to over $100, has QC issues, a very slim chance of getting accessories for the price you paid for it, and gets a repaint every now and then that gets more and more expensive. Or you could just spend $50 on one figure that barely has any issues and all of the other repaints are at the same price. It's like how NECA handled things back then. You could buy a version of this figure that comes with accessories for the same price, unlike SH which advertises an atomic repaint that doesn't come with said accessory, which is why I'm okay with this thing not coming with one. If you're looking for a Godzilla figure that looks realistic and is big enough to tower over other figures all at a reasonable price, then I highly suggest it. But keep in mind, Haya Toys might pull out something better than the last. Of course, it's up to you on whether or not you should get this figure now, or wait for the next updated version of this thing. Or you could just get both. This figure really is as good as people say it is. And that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video, whenever that'll be. Alright, I know that I keep ragging on SH Monster Arts, but come on. If Haya Toys can be SH Monster Arts King Ghidorah figure, just imagine what their Mecha Godzilla would look like.